In this video, I want to help you see XBRL work. I'm going to walk you through something and then I'm going to show you how um, I'm doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to start here with this database application that I use to kind of cobble everything together. So what I have here is I have an accounting system. Here's my general journal and these are all the journal entries. There's my balance for cash and cash equivalents and others. You'll see, just remember that for a second. Um, so I already created the report. I'm going to do it again and show you how it works in a second. But um, here are the facts that make up the report. And I can audit the information, make sure that's correct. I can build um, an XBRL instance, which I've already done. Um, I can uh, build the fact table from the general ledger. Then I can generate the instance from the fact table that I can check the quality and I can extract information from the report. Um, so I'm going to walk you through all this, but first I want to show you the report that I already created. So here's the report that I created. Here are the validation rules. You see everything is satisfied. Okay, and here is also um, an XBRL Cloud um, uh, evidence package that shows that everything is valid and everything is copacetic. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that this thing actually works by putting an error, just a simple little error in the facts. Okay, so now I have an unbalanced entry and I'm going to cause some other problems. So I first it tells me that I have an unbalanced entry. Okay. Um, so this is doing some basic auditing stuff. Um, I built the fact table. I generated the XPRL instance. I'm going to run, this is uh, the UB matrix XPE. This is a batch process. You create a text file, batch file, put some stuff in it and then it does its work. And you can already see that it's showing an inconsistency. I'm going to let it run. Just takes a second here. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to run another batch process. This is uh, XBRL Cloud's X run, which is an old thing that I have and use. Um, so now I'm going to go to this file and I'm going to refresh it, and you see that it's not satisfied because there's an error in the report. Okay, things don't add up. I'm going to also go here. To the XBRO Cloud evidence or their clean score. I'm going to delete the existing. I'm going to delete this one too. I'm going to grab the new XBRO entrance that was just generated. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to run the reports again. And there you can see that my balance changed. There's that one. And it doesn't look bad here. But when you go here, you see that there are errors go down and look at the rules, you can see 
the errors. Okay? So what's going on here? Well, I'll tell you. So this is basically, I have done uh, a record to report process completely through. And in fact, I've done more than that. So I'm going to explain this. And um, people are familiar with the term re record to report or record to report. Uh, we, things go from the accounting system to the report. Well, I'm going to take that one step further. So, and there's some information here Oracle has on record to report. And this is kind of like the notion of Deloitte's finance factory. Okay, so, and this is what is involved. You have the accounting system, you have reporting. And that's what, you move stuff from here to there, and you get the report done. And a lot of this is done manually. Um, well, I completely automated this process. Um, I've also added more analysis. Um, so I showed you, but here I ran this for the old uh, report that was there that was correct, and it extracted. Basically, I've got the same report being extracted. Um, what's five times, four times, five times? So but I'm going to extract it with the error, and you see. There's the error. So I'm taking this not just to the level of um, a report. I'm taking this to analysis and I'm also adding uh, auditing to all this process. So this application that I have does all these things. It's a framework for doing all this stuff in an automated fashion. And what the way it works is Everything is done in XBRL. Uh, you, you can import information into the accounting system using XBRL. You can export it from one accounting system and then import it into an accounting, another accounting system using XBRL. Um, so basically you're adding XBRL. You're adding some information to the transaction that can help you get the information all the way through this process in XBRL. So that's what I'm doing. So for example, here you start from the journal entry and you get this. You get the four core financial statements. Um, all the mathematical relationships are in, in, interconnected and they work. Um, you also get uh, all the disclosures. So I'm only doing a portion of the disclosures right now in this demo, um, but I can do an entire report. I can do an SEC filing, a complete SEC filing in the same manner. These are just um, the ones that I have done uh, right now. Um, you get all the validation. I showed you that in the XPRO Cloud tool. Um, you have the mechanics of each disclosure checked. This does two things. Number one, the fact that I can detect all of these disclosures um, helps you understand that an analysis process can detect the disclosures also. If they can be detected for verification, they can also be detected for analysis. So I'm doing that. Um, I'm also doing a reporting checklist uh, or a disclosure checklist. So basically, these ha this has rules about what disclosure has to be present in the report. This is all um, done and it's all checked and correct here. Um, I'm doing consistency cross checks. So these, this is a separate set of uh, verification rules that go across reports. Uh, some rules relate to a specific report. Other rules go across report. It takes care of those. Um, it computes additional facts using XBRL formula chaining, um, which I've explained. But basically, it takes existing facts and it computes working capital, return on assets, return on equity, return on sales. Um, and it, uh, you can also, using the same rules, um, you can analyze, extract information from a report effectively. Um, and basically, this is what the process does. So in summary, um, you 
generate you can generate um, from journal entries human readable and machine readable XBRL based reports that are either uh, and I've done I did both I only showed you the raw XBRL but I did inline XBRL also uh, it's automated it's not a manual process um, 100% of the mathematical computations are verified. 100% of the disclosure mechanics rules are verified. 100% of the disclosure rules, you know, what has to be uh, disclosed is verified. 100% of the consistency cross checks are verified. And I can effectively extract the information from the report. Okay, so how did I do this? Um, so my method is 100% global standard. XPRL and existing software applications. The software exists today. So I basically uh, have a, the capability to import or export journal entries using either XPRL Global Ledger or XPRL Type Dimensions. Some people prefer this, some people prefer that. Um, the process uses an XPRL taxonomy to configure both the report and the report writer. So this may not, people may not understand this, but basically this is a report writer. It, it, it uses the taxonomy for creating the report uh, just the way a report writer does. And you include information. Uh, I added or mapped information. I, I added in mine, or you can map experimental concept information to the general ledger accounts, okay, and make this work. There's two ways to make this work. Um, I added a something that I think Luca Piccoli forgot to add to double entry accounting. Uh, I'm not sure about that because I have not read his, uh, his the documentation of his double, his work on double entry bookkeeping. But um, I added a, one code to uh, the general uh, journal entries, um, and you can either. Um, do this within an accounting system, but most accounting systems don't support that. So you can supplement the process by adding it in a process that I have, which I'm not going to explain because I think I'm going to patent that process. Um, you use XPRL formula uh, rules and XPRL definition relations to document this entire, all this stuff in machine readable form. And you use XPRL formula chaining to derive these additional facts, um, you basically uh, impute or derive additional information that you need to work with from the existing information in the report. All of this is 100% automated. Okay, so tool. How did I do this? With what tools did I use? Okay, I used UB Matrix Taxonomy Designer for creating a taxonomies. So this has pros and cons. Um, it does some things well, it does some things uh, it's too hard to use, um, but I know what needs to be modified. But, but I, you can do it with this today. I did create my own taxonomy creation tool. Um, it follows some more rigorous rules than uh, the UB Matrix Taxonomy Designer do, uh, allows you to do, but I don't have a nice interface. This is basically just a bunch of database tables that I have to um, edit. But all I have to do is pop an interface on that and this will work just fine. Um, so here's how you view it. Again, the interface is terrible, but it, it gets the job done right now. But it's just a Microsoft Access database. And this is some of the metadata that I added. The general ledger uh, account codes, they're all in a taxonomy. And these transaction description codes, they're all in an experimental taxonomy. And my database reads these things and configures the report writer. Um, you can't see the relations here, but in this tool, this is Pesseract, you can see that I'm saying that cash and cash equivalents is a real account. Um, sales is a temporary account. And this net income is a temporary account that all the temporary accounts get netted into. And this, these are transaction codes. I'm describing these things in XBRL and then reading it into my accounting system uh, database. And that's how I make this stuff work. So here are those transaction codes. So I'm not going to explain this too much. Um, and this supports 
Expiral dimensions. It doesn't look like it does if you go back. Oops. Here it doesn't seem like it does, but it actually does. I'm not using expiral dimensions in this example, but it does support expiral dimensions. Um, this is the validation, uh, the UV matrix XPE. Um, it does a really good job because you can. It uses the messages that you can write in expiral formula, and it'll modify what is pulled up in these messages. It makes it easier to read. Uh, expiral cloud does not have that message inf or doesn't have the detail information. This is PESTERAC that is used for validating the disclosure mechanics. Um, this is PESTERAC that is used to uh, validate that the reporting disclosure rules are being followed. Um, this is the matrix XPIL processor doing the uh, continuity cross-check validation. Um, this is XPIL Cloud evidence package that is used for the human readable report. Um, this is another, this is uh, the validation report. Um, it's part of this application. Um, this is the an auto-generated inline XBRL. I think people are, are fascinated with, X, with the inline XBRL, but I think it's a red herring. This stuff's going to be auto-generated. Look how nice this is. And I can reformat this however I want. And I can add or remove these things. It's, again, it's just a report writer is what it is. It's a global standard report writer. And this is a uh, human readable, uh, human uh, review tool, uh, Pesseract. Um, and I will leave it at that. But that is, th what you're seeing is how accounting is going to be done. Accounting, reporting, auditing, and analysis is going to be done um, in the future. And I'll stop there. Okay, I changed my mind. I want to add one more thing to the end of this video. I want to address the issue of complexity. So you're looking at the most complex thing in this system. So you have a business user would have to edit formulas that look like this. So there's one other formula, um, this one. This is an impute formula and it has a precondition and some other stuff. It's This can be made a little bit easier but not that much. And this one is um, a little bit complicated but it's not that complicated. So how am I making this so uncomplicated? So the reason I'm doing, or how I'm doing that is I'm using patterns. And, um, you know, rather than creating a really flexible tool that will do anything, I'm creating a specific tool that, that does all the things that a, an account needs 99% of the time. And if you want to do the 1%, the um, you can still do that and you have to edit basically at a lower level but for 99% of the things you don't have to do that. So I leverage patterns and that's what makes this simple. Literally this is the hardest to most complex technical pieces of this entire process.